Hi everyone, I'm Jordan, actor, ASL coach, and member of 100 Decibels Deaf Mime Troupe. My parents are both from the Philippines, but they actually met here in Winnipeg. I have an older brother and two younger sisters. But I am actually the only deaf person in the family. As is typical in Filipino culture, growing up we had a lot of lively family gatherings and celebrations centered around food and music. And that was a bit of a learning process. I was learning ASL, which meant my family in turn had to figure out how to communicate and interact with me. The development of those skills didn't necessarily lead to my development as a performer, but they certainly contributed to it. And I hadn't really thought of acting as something I could do at that point in my life. It was just something I left on the back burner, unsure as to what I would do with it. It wasn't until high school that the thought resurfaced. I got more involved in performance by signing music, translation of songs into ASL, and then I also did some stage work in the theater. Being on stage was really where I caught the acting bug and seriously considered whether this was something for me or not. At that time, there were no role models that I could aspire to. I hadn't had any exposure to deaf performers. And then an opportunity presented itself. Back in 2013, someone was looking for people to take a mime class, which I will admit I was skeptical about. Growing up, I thought mime was just a person with a white painted face, dressed in white gloves and a striped shirt stuck in a pretend box. But I thought, hey, you know, keep an open mind, and then joined the class. It was a very eye-opening experience for me, and I realized that mime was so much more than I thought. I gained so many skills, like the art of story creation. Not that we recognized it at the time, but that class was where 100 Decibels was formed. And while there were several other members that later left the troupe, that class was where Joanna Hawkins, Christopher de Guzman, and I met and immersed ourselves into what mime had to offer. Our understanding of mime morphed into physical sketch comedy. And we subsequently decided to form 100 Decibels, which opened a lot of doors for us. One of our first public shows was in the summer of 2014 at the Winnipeg Fringe Festival. Uh, and this was the impetus that really took me from mime to physical sketch comedy to working in theater on the main stage, all of which have led me to this moment. In the future, 100 Decibels would like to convey that we can all work together and would like to see more, a more diverse collaboration of individuals, no matter the background, be it people who are deaf, non-deaf, indigenous, black, people of color or not. One of our main goals is to expose people that aren't deaf to the fact that we're a part of this community too, and we can work together. We want to inspire future generations to keep an open mind and an open heart to be willing to work with us. We would like to see more opportunities that go both ways. What I mean by that is, it refers back to what I mentioned earlier. I didn't have those role models when I was growing up. So to be that inspiration for future generations, to see that they can have big dreams and not limit themselves, irregardless of their origin, their background, their disability. But to dream big, and not just in performing arts, it's bigger than that, to apply this to whatever their passion might be.